Good day, everyone. My name is Anissa Barton Thompson, and I'm the social media specialist for the College of Extended and International Education here at California State University, Dominguez Hills. I'll be your host for this presentation. Welcome. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on our website and social media resources shortly after today's session. Feel free to download the Meeting and Event Planning Certificate Programs Information Kit for details about the program and additional resources covered in today's webinar. The address is bit.ly slash CSUDH dash MEX dash info kit. We have provided a link in the chat for those who are participating live. It'll also be available via a follow up email to our attendees as well as on our website. Before we jump in, I'd like to review the Zoom controls. This session is being presented in a webinar format, so you won't need to worry about connecting your microphone or camera. However, we want your participation. Help us address your questions. Use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen if you are joining us from the Zoom desktop app or web browser, or in the top right of your screen if you're on a mobile device. Please ask your questions in the Q&A panel rather than in the chat panel. In the chat panel, we'll be providing links and other helpful information. Once you click the Q&A button, a dialog box will open allowing you to type your question. Our marketing staff members, Stephanie Buchian and Keith Otterberg are standing by to assist. We'll be answering those questions at the end of the session, although often you may find the question you have has been answered during those program overviews. With that being said, let's take a quick look at our agenda for this meeting and let's um, make it uh, clear. Sometimes we use an abbreviation called MEX. That stands for meeting and event planning. Um, we'll begin this, the meeting by joining our certificate faculty who will introduce you to the program via an overview of benefits, expectations, and course details. And now to kick off today's presentation, I'll turn it over to Haley Powers, one of our instructors for the program. Haley, take it away. Here, uh, each are experts in their respective areas and each brings a wealth of experience to the classroom. They are going to help you break down what's going on in the industry today. Uh, I will introduce our um, instructors. We have Lisa Gardner, Marla Haar, CMP, Michael Herman, Haley Powers, that's me, Certified Meeting Professional, uh, Clint Upchurch, Charmaine Wilkerson, and Deshaun Wynn, CMP hyphen HC. Meetings and events represent a $280 billion industry. The industry directly employs 1.7 million people, which is more than many domestic industries, including 1.3 million in broadcasting and communications, 1.5 million in truck and rail transportation, and 1.4 million in computer systems design and related services. Uh, recent events have rendered big changes and the industry continues to adapt as going strong but in learning and using new and virtual platforms or reviewing plans to return to in-person meetings. Um, the things uh, that are thriving within this field touches every aspect of business and commerce. General questions that everyone has on their minds, effects of COVID, uh, lockdown, and what directions to take, et cetera. Projected annual job openings refer the average and annual job openings due to the growth and net replacement. Favorable job prospects as well as job, strong job satisfaction scores help this profession rank in the top 25 of the best jobs in 2020. Now, whether you're new to the meeting and event industry or currently employed in a mid-level administrative assistant or marketing coordinator or a seasoned pro who wants to sharpen your skills, Cal State University Dominguez Health's meeting and event planning industry certificate program offers the 
opportunity to expand your knowledge within this growing industry. You'll be able to catch up with the latest trends and technology, explore new career opportunities, and extend your abilities as a planner. Um, our obviously is goal is to help the students connect with the community. There's many people who should attend, but right now we're going to look at some of the job uh, descriptions, a meeting planner, event director, meeting coordinator, wedding planner, special event planner, destination um, management planner, corporate planner, association planner, or an independent meeting planner. Given the changes in society over the past year, the meeting and planning industry has changed dramatically. The meeting and event planning program at Cal State University Dominguez Hills will address the fundamentals and key planning tools in the industry, as well as new practices and consider considered considerations related to unexpected events. The meeting and event certificate program will teach you how to plan, design, and execute a variety of events from weddings and social occasions to sales, meeting, and other corporate company events. Students who successfully complete this program are eligible to receive a certificate. The schedule is the courses are held on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and you can complete the certificate program in as little as three months. The courses are offered twice a year during our fall and spring terms. To view our current course schedule, download our program information kit or check out our website. The location, the courses are now offered in an online modality using Blackboard and Zoom. At this time, on-campus attendance is, um, no on-campus attendance is required. We'll talk about your student access a little bit later in the presentation. But right now, we'll hear from Clint Upchurch. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, Clint Upchurch here. I have uh, been in the industry over 25 years. And I actually got involved in the industry by being a cater waiter on the weekends, so working for a staffing agency. And once I started working for a catering company, I realized this is where I needed to be. This was my passion. Worked for a catering company the first half of my career and second half of my career worked uh, in producing corp large corporate conferences um, and events, but still my food, my love for food and passion, uh, food and beverage lives on. Uh, I'll be teaching two courses over um, the course of the weeks. Uh, one is uh, introduction and, and fundamentals of meeting planning, and then the other one is uh, food and beverage. Um, in the, uh, in the, for the uh, introduction and fundamentals of meeting planning, this course will provide an overview of the meetings industry information regarding resources, professional organizations, and career possibilities. Even in these difficult times, there are still career possibilities. You guys will learn and demonstrate your knowledge of event-related terminology. You'll learn about meeting room layouts and capacity formulas, safety requirements, which are changing by the day, legal and financial parameters. And this class will provide quick tips for successes, identifying goals and parameters, and developing timelines and budgets. Um, by the end of this course, you will be able to describe the scope and diversity of the ev event planning as a career. You'll be able to de determine the goals and objectives of any events. You'll be able to organize tasks, which are many when you're event planning, and develop a timeline for the execution of an event. You'll be able to write a request for proposal for goods and services, and you use the basic formulas for room settings, which those are also changing. Uh, the capacities for events are changing almost daily. So that's something that uh, is a good skill to have and will be ever changing. The next course that I'll be uh, teaching you guys, as I mentioned, is food and beverage. And with food and beverage, we'll be working how to work, uh, teaching you how to work with a myriad of food and beverage suppliers, whether it's a hotel or a caterer, or the chef directly. And if you're lucky, even here in this town, especially because you're here in this town, it may be a celebrity chef you get to work with. Um, uh, we'll go over all the trends, all the food trends, from small plates to buffet service to the now current shipping boxes of food to people for a, a hybrid, virtual hybrid event. 
So all types of trends, the trends just like in, in everything else in our career right now, trends for food and beverage are changing rapidly. And then we'll learn how to deal with the uh, other issues of different uh, food um, needs and dietary restrictions. Those are also, it seems like we're in an ever evolving world where everything that we do is really changing. And that's including all of our tastes for food and our, and our um, you know, realizing what our, our, our uh, uh, nutritional <laughs> needs really are. And then we'll learn how to do, how to work with those, uh, how to make sure you satisfy everyone, how to make sure your budget is met, all your goals and objectives are met, and everyone leaves with a happy stomach. So excited, hope you guys join us. And now I'd like to invite back Haley Powers to talk about the course that she teaches. Haley? Thank you, Clint. Um, yes, I'm going to briefly introduce myself. My name is Haley Powers. I'm a graduate of Eastern Michigan University. I joined uh, Hyatt Hotels in 1976 and worked there for eight years. Uh, and during that time, I was director of sales and marketing at two Hyatts. I also, over further years, became a director of sales and marketing at Sheraton, Embassy Suites, Marriott, and Red Lion National Sales. I became an executive director of the West Hollywood Convention and Visitors Bureau and also worked at the Los Angeles Convention and Visitors Bureau. So that gave me an opportunity to work with multiple citywide conventions. Um, I've been a, in MPI since 1982 and was a board member for three years. And I started my own meeting planning company in 20, 2002 rather. And I have had an opportunity to teach uh, hotel and restaurant management at UCLA, meeting planning and um, at Cal State Long Beach and Cal State Dominguez Hills. And I also facilitated the CMP program for the Southern California chapter of Meeting Professionals International to, since 2007. So that gives you a little background on who I am. Um, I've been working with the MEX program at Cal State Dominguez Hills about six years and um, I've had a, a great opportunity to grow my career in many different ways um, within, within the scope of, of living in the same location. A lot of people in our industry move from city to city, but I've had the opportunity to stay in Los Angeles. Um, I'm also going to uh, teach a class on site inspection, and I have some learning outcomes here that I think would be kind of interesting. Um, we will develop and um, I think it's important with site selection and site inspection to remember that those are two separate things. Site selection uh, is the process of getting the information you need from the hotels and then uh, site inspection is when you go look at them, which we will not be doing in this class physically, but we will learn all the ways to go about it. So we'll develop an informative and detailed request for proposal We'll define needs versus wants. We'll find resources for determining the correct location and facility type, including uh, destination management companies and using convention and visitors bureaus. We'll identify profile attendees to craft the content of their specific requirements. We'll identify the pros and cons of each location. And we'll learn how to measure successes of each location geographically for specific needs for using group history to our advantage to determine the amenities each facility offers and its importance and priority, how to prioritize the need for ancillary space for registration offices, speakers, rooms, et cetera, and to um, reading hotel function space um, capabilities with a little bit of a grain of salt. We do that because um, everybody wants us to choose their location, but we have to make sure we have the skills to pick out the very best one. I also teach a class um, in um, contracts. Now, I know this is kind of intimidating to some people, but just so you know, we have a lot of fun with it. We go ahead and uh, learn what a contract is and how to ask for one, um, what should go into a contract, why relationships are important, contract verbiage, when to apply it and when to omit it. And don't worry, we have some games with that part because the verbiage can get tiresome but we may make it fun. The difference between wants and needs, what concessions are in balancing the ratio of concessions to the value of your business, the difference between commissions and net rates, how to read a contract and have some uh, samples, contract ethics, 
why convention centers and venue contracts are different from hotel contracts, how to negotiate, tactics to use, and know what is a win-win, case studies, reviewing contracts and what each party is liable for, special updates in force majeure that re, uh, relate specifically to COVID and other unexpected events, and what to do after the contract is signed and how it can be, um, how you can make changes after that. So that is what we're going to do in those two classes. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. We'll hope you'll join us. And let me turn it over to Charmaine. Hi there. Hi, everybody. My name is Charmaine Wilkerson, and I used to work at Cal State Dominguez. I used to be the event planner on campus. And I remember one day that the dean of the School of Extended Ed came up to me and said, ah, I'd like to start a certificate program in meeting and event planning, and I'd like for you to start it. And then I said, but I don't have a PhD or a master's degree, you know, to teach university level. And she said, oh, academic is different than extended ed. In extended ed, all you need to do is be a professional in your industry and that's what you are because you came, uh, you came from the president's office and he's the one who recommended you. And this is how our meeting and event planning certificate was born. I was going to say maybe about 15, over 15 years ago. Before that, I also owned my own event management company with my mom. Her name is Liliana Wilkerson, and she founded the company. And we specialize in corporate events and executive dining in Los Angeles. But recently, I've moved up to the Bay Area and I've been working in tech companies, also in corporate executive dining and special events. And currently I work for Visa and I manage all of their in-house training. And currently post COVID, I am now the moderator, but I'm still responsible for the experience, but now virtually. So let's talk about the class that I teach, which is special event management. So because of my background, both as an independent planner and as an employee, it allows me to share the case studies that I have experienced from both perspectives. So what you see on the screen, the bottom left hand corner picture, that's the picture of the first event that I ever produced as a lead producer. And that was the opening of the Reagan Library, which is a few years ago in Simi Valley. And that was the first time where five presidents who were alive got together for the first time in history, along with their first ladies. So I learned a lot from that event. It was 10,000 people over three days. Then I've been working the Oscars and the Emmys, the Governor's Ball, and I can share some of the experiences that I've um, had through those, all of these events that I've managed. So about the class and some of the takeaways is are the lessons learned and best practices. So I'll be sharing those with you and including project management tools that will be that we use in logistics that are industry standards towards a successful event. We will also discuss how to create experiences that can be consumable in many different ways due to COVID-19. So for example, since hybrid events have morphed into a TV show format where you have live speakers or performers, you have a limited live audience, and then you have a strong tech infrastructure for the virtual portion, we're gonna propose how these three different dimensions will take form when designing an event. At the end of the class, you'll be designing your own event. You're gonna be broken into groups and you're gonna incorporate the event planning tools that you learned in class and share these ideas with your classmates, including your group's wow. And to explain what is your wow, I have a guest speaker in my class, my mom, Liliana Wilkerson, who has a degree in hotel and restaurant management from Cal Poly Pomona. And the name of the company that she founded and that we own, the name of the company 
was And Here's Lily. So with no further ado, And Here's Lily to explain the wow. Hold on. Good morning, young people. I'm excited and I am very happy to continue at this age and era, my specialty. The wow that I want to explain to you is your personality and your enthusiasm that you give to your own every day, every day uh, yeah. event. event. Uh, it, it, is, it has to be, it's not a sales pitch. You wow is you, you, your personality, what you are giving to that, uh, to the function, what can you bring to that function? And then we talk about that when the time comes. Okay, and with, with that, next is Michael. Michael Herman. Um, and I have been teaching in this program since I think the very beginning. I've got a BA in broadcasting, an MBA in arts management. And after years of working in theater and television and also teaching theater and television, I went into the hotel AV business uh, in which I worked for over 20 years. I've been the, the director, the assistant director, the manager, sales manager of hotels like Los Santa Monica, Universal Sheraton, Four Seasons, Newport Beach, the Omni downtown, and um, about 10 others, something like that. Uh, and lately, until March, I've been uh, freelancing, so I've worked for quite a number of companies in a lot of different venues. Um, and I always say it's, it's better than working. Um, so why do we have meetings to communicate? What is AV? It's a way to communicate. So the food is important, the rooms are important, but people are in the meeting to communicate. And that's what AV is all about. So my class is the most important class. So I wanna be there for that one. Uh, what we'll do is I'll show you all the elements of audiovisuals. we'll look at uh, in-person meetings, hybrid meetings, virtual meetings, all the different technology necessary to do all the different things you need to do, uh, what the different technologies do, when to use them, um, how to use them to a certain extent, uh, where do you find them, how do you get them, what should you be paying. So you'll know at the end of the class what's going on and ultimately you'll be able to speak intelligently knowledgeably to your audiovisual provider. That's the goal. So that's it for me. And I'm going to hand it over to Lisa Gardner. Thank you, Michael. Hi, everyone. Okay, I know Michael likes to say that his class is the most important. But if you don't have clients, you don't have a business. So that's where marketing comes into it. Um, now, I started my career, I'm a marketing and brand strategist, and I work with the top brands in the special events industry. I began my career, actually, though, as a journalist in the event industry. So I learned how to talk to businesses and look at them quickly and find out what's so important about them that they can take then and market. I also learned from them that they hate to market themselves. It's really hard for small businesses and entrepreneurs to market yourself, right? It's really uh, intimidating because you feel like you are tooting your own horn. I'm gonna teach you how to toot your own horn and feel comfortable doing it and feel um, good about doing it with online because we are more online than ever now with COVID. So you have to be very careful with your message, with your words and how you present them. So what I'm first gonna talk about is the marketing and branding and sales and what is different about that because those words are used interchangeably and they're really not. So once you know what those three things are, you can begin to use them to your advantage. We're gonna talk about developing a marketing campaign based on like my six pillars of all of the different types of marketing, advertising, sales, and branding strategies there are out there. I'm gonna to talk to you about how to make your personal brand stand out 
and we're going to just give you all of the tools that you need even for your social media and for email marketing which I really believe in and I'm going to talk to you about that a lot. <laughs> So we are going to do a few um, workshops. One of them is to do a small marketing campaign uh, for an opening of a venue, which um, you know normally wouldn't be happening maybe right now, but it does really bring all of those six pillars of marketing and sales and branding into play. So you'll see how they work. Then you're also going to write your most powerful social media bio, because that's what's going to present you to the world across LinkedIn, across um, Facebook, across, um, um, well, Instagram and Twitter. So you're going to be using that for your tagline that you will be telling everyone in the elevator. If we were in an elevator still, <laughs> you know, I don't even know how we're going to have to say, we're going to have to reprogram that elevator speech for, I don't know what. And, um, we are going to talk about those platforms again, like I talked about LinkedIn, um, Instagram, which ones work best? How do they work? How can you attract your ideal client on each one? How you can use LinkedIn for job searches. It still really works um, very well for that. Why your personal one page website is so important and a couple of different platforms on which you can build that. Um, and again, the brief overview of those six pillars of marketing and which ones work best for your goals. And one thing I'm going to do in this new in this new class this time is at the end of it, we're going to go through those six pillars and you're, we are going to talk about which one you are actually going to um, start to use immediately and how you can start to use it. And I think, is that it for me? I believe that is it for my slides. Um, I would like to introduce you to Marla Har. everyone i'm marla har and i have the pleasure of teaching both of the elective classes global planning and wedding planning i'm a graduate of ohio state university in columbus ohio i'm a certified business etiquette and international protocol consultant and i'm an adjunct faculty member at arizona state university where i teach two meeting and event classes that are for a four-year degree program and um Years ago, I worked for a company called Classroom Connect, and we did conferences for teachers across the country. So I have experience in almost every major market in the country. And I bring to all of my classes my 25 years of experience. And one of the things I love to do is to bring in all these experiences that I've had. So let's talk about global planning. When you plan a global meeting, you start with your basics. Um, as you would planning a domestic event, which means you're planning it in the United States, it becomes more complicated because you and your attendees are now out of the United States and you're in another country and you have to follow their culture and their laws. And as you can see on the screen, this class is part lecture and part group assignment. Uh, and you will plan and present an international incentive meeting. So we have our pre-planning, where we're going to research uh, the country's culture, customs, and laws. Then we have our budget, where you need to understand the currency difference between countries. And then also there's additional line items that you need in order to plan and stay uh, on budget with an international. And then we're going to plan and discuss building relationships, which is critical. Um, it's sort of like you're not in Kansas anymore, and so you really need to understand the culture um, that you're going into, who they do business with, and how they do business. And in the class itself, we will take some time to research what is it going to take because of the virus to keep our attendees safe while we are um, abroad. Now, if we look at the idiosyncrasies, and what I mean by an idiosyncrasy would be if you're planning an event in um, Quebec, Canada, uh, you need to know that your signs must be printed in both French and English. And if you don't know that, and you show up in Quebec, 
you will have to reprint your signs. So that's an idea of what an idiosyncrasy is. We will also cover site visits, vendor selection, uh, international contract negotiations, customs. Do you know where your packages are? What's a trip kit? Registration forms, on-site logistics, and of course, post-event recaps. Now the fun begins. You will uh, be broken into a groups and you'll plan a seven day incentive meeting in Brazil or the Czech Republic. You will do your research as you can see on the screen. You will develop the budget and this includes your flights, hotels, the activities, room drop gifts, food and beverage and ground transportation. And you will create a detailed timeline for the four days of your activities in the local area. And then you get to present your uh, event to the class. Wedding planning. Well, let's see. I was a wedding consultant for seven years, one of the most difficult jobs I've ever had. And so this class is what it is about what it takes to be a wedding consultant and why planning a family event is different than planning a corporate, a nonprofit, or a special event. We will use my wedding workbook, The Five Easy Steps to a Successful and Fun Wedding, as the handout materials. So we're gonna start the class with, how do you set up a bridal business? It would be the skills and qualities of a wedding consultant, the role and responsibilities of a wedding consultant, understanding family dynamics, managing a budget, vendors, the importance of a well-rounded list and working with the vendor, and creating uh, your wedding day timeline and on-site logistics. So some of the discussion groups, um, building your business, you have to define who's your market. You have to decide, are you gonna start full-time or part-time? You really need to understand what are the legal requirements, um, both federal, state, and uh, of course, financial requirements. And how do you set your fees? And how do you collect? You need to have cash flow coming in to keep your business afloat. And then we'll review the 45 items that um, it's, I call it the to-do list to pull your event together. And then of course, we'll go through um, a daily timely. Your, well, I call it the wedding weekend event because it really starts before the day of. So that is uh, the wedding class. It's pretty interactive. And we will also, because of COVID-19, spend some time looking at how do you do a wedding online? So those are my classes. I really hope to see you in class, regardless of where your interest or career is taking you. So I look forward to seeing you. And I would like to turn this over to Deshaun. Good morning, everyone. My name is Deshaun Nguyen. I am a certified meeting professional with a subspecialty in healthcare. Um, I started my career over 20 years ago working in my college wedding chapel, and uh, you could not get me to plan a wedding ever again uh, after that experience. So um, hats off to Marla um, and all of you who plan weddings. Um, I currently, um, this is my 10th year in business. I started my, my company 10 years ago. Um, I deal in um, content design and meeting strategy. Um, and I am excited to be teaching um, two classes um, also uh, this coming semester. The first one we're gonna talk about is financial management for event planning. Um, I saw one of the um, questions that was put in the chat was, um, does this course cover smaller events or private events. And one of the things that, whether it is a major event or a small event or a wedding, one thing that every um, event has is a budget. Um, I know that Michael said that his class is the most important. I would like to say that my class is the most fun. Because <laughs> um, who does not want to deal with math and uh, Excel spreadsheets? Hey. Um, so we will be walking through all of the different things that you need to know about an event budget because it's very important whether your event is fully sponsored or that you're going to have to bring in cash flow. You need to know how to manage the inflow and the outflow of your money. Um, we're going to talk about variable and fixed costs and how those costs affect your budget. Um, and we will also learn um, very common formulas that you need to know to 
um, to, to do things like food and beverage, um, to, to uh, calculate service charges, your room rates. There are some, um, some formulas that you need to know in order to do that effectively. We will also talk about events that need to make a profit. How do you budget so that you can make a profit? Um, we'll talk about uh, whether or not you, know, you want to break even. What is the break even point? How many attendees do you need in order to break even? So these are the type of things that we'll go over during the class and the workshop. Um, we will uh, be doing case studies and hands-on um, uh, uh, hands uh, samples we'll give you so that as you learn these uh, formulas and these calculations, you'll be able to understand how to apply them to different um, scenarios and different events. When you walk away from this class, um, you will have a budgeting template that is in um, an Excel spreadsheet that has some of these uh, formulas already pre-populated in the Excel spreadsheet. So it's going to make your life a little bit easier when you leave this class for your future events. Um, you'll already have a head start on, um, on planning those budgets. Uh, this class is co-taught with Christina LaRubio. Um, she is also um, a, an event planner, but she works on the corporate side. And so uh, her approach to budgeting is just a little bit different as me as an entrepreneur. For me, I'm normally just dealing with a one-time budget of, a, of an event and I move on. Where her, um, when she approaches budgeting, she's approaching it from the scenario of multiple years and, and uh, the company overall. So it's the same concepts, but just a little bit different nuance. And um, the fact that I'm working with Christina LaRubio kind of segues way into the importance of um, this uh, certificate program. Uh, because I met Christina LaRubio 10 years ago when I was in this program. Um, so I sat in the very same place that you are. Um, I took the workshop and uh, met Christina. We, she helped me start the business uh, uh, 10 years ago, I used the 50 hours of instruction in this class to um, as uh, educational hours that I needed for my CMP. Um, and so I was able to test for my CMP based on the hours that I received from this workshop. Um, I say that this, um, as you've learned at the beginning of this webinar, this industry is very large, but at the same time, we have a very intimate network because I can also say that one of the reasons why I have my CMP is because of Haley Powers. She was my teacher in my uh, study group uh, to get the CMP. Um, I serve on the board of directors for Meeting Professionals International, uh, which is a organization that I learned about through this course. And uh, that is where I met Clint and have worked many years with him. So, you know, uh, taking this class, you'll, you, you will become a part of this network that we have. And if you're looking for a job or you're looking for a career advancement um, or you're um, just looking to be better, uh, you want to be a part of this network because um, everybody here, um, you know, is going through it, has gone through it. Um, right now, everybody is um, changing their workshop to include things that we're going through right now with the pandemic. You know, because of the pandemic, we have all had to make a changes and adjustments. And everybody who is teaching in this uh, certificate course um, is making those pivots and adjustments, and we can help you also. So it is an amazing course to take. And um, I would also like to say that we are offering a brand new course this year, um, which is not uh, officially a part of the certificate. So it's, you don't need to take it to get your um, credential, but we do recommend that everybody um, be willing to take the class and um, because we think it's very important. Um, and that is the risk management for meeting and event planning. Um, I'm very excited to, to, um, to be teaching this class this year. Well, we'll look at risks that are associated with the meetings and events industry, how to mitigate those and how to manage it. Um, the safety and security of your attendees, your vendors, your staff is very important. And it's not something that just happens haphazardly. It is something that you actually have to plan for. So we will talk about how do you identify the risks that are associated with your event, 
and how do you uh, plan for a not hopefully uh, those those uh, dangers not happening during your event. But if something does go wrong, how do you respond to it? And how do you recover from it? Um, we will look at communication. Um, how do you communicate to your attendees and your uh, vendors uh, before, during, and after? Um, we will also look at things like social media policies um, and press policies. Um, and we will learn how to identify roles. Who is going to be the person who communicates um, or who does the communication? Um, who, who are going, you know, if something were to happen, you know, who is the person who's going to, um, you know, work with the venue to, to make sure that that is um, resolved? So these are all things that we will learn about and we will put together in a template that is called the risk management plan. This template is something that you, again, you'll be able to walk away with and use in your future meetings so that every meeting that you have um, going forward, you, will, you know that you will have a plan in place um, for keeping your attendees safe. Um, the safety of attendees can be something as simple as making sure that a person with um, a food uh, allergy doesn't get sick. So what plans are in place to keep that, that person safe? Um, it can also be as uh, simple as um, how do you ensure that there are no uh, party crashers to your event or, you know, if you're dealing with young kids, how are you going to make sure that you are able to identify, you know, where those children are at all times and keep them safe. Um, and then, then it can be as large as to what we're dealing with right now. Do we have a global uh, pandemic going on and what is our response and um, we'll look at um, the, the levels of risk. So uh, with whatever is being um, thrown our way right now, does this mean that we move forward through the, with the meeting? Do we cancel the meeting or do we make a change and a pivot? These are all things that we will talk about, we'll identify and we'll be able to put in our risk management template. So I am looking forward to hopefully seeing all of you in my class. Well, actually be able to see you um, <laughs> in, the, in, in the webinar. And with that, I will pass it back over to Anissa. Thank you so much. Um, Sean, Haley, Clint, Marla, Armain, uh, Lisa, Michael, you guys did a great job. We want to thank all the instructors. Um, and we're actually going to come back to the instructors momentarily when we do our Q&A segment. Um, but first, we're going to just take a quick deep dive into the course delivery and registration details so that everybody knows how to uh, get coordinated there. Um, almost all of the CSUDH extended ed programs are being offered in an online format right now, which means that students are assigned online access through our campus's IT services. Each student will need login credentials to access our student portal called MyCSUDH. This portal includes Blackboard, our learning management system where course content is distributed, ToroMail, which is our Gmail-based student email system, and the Zoom web conferencing tool, of course. These login credentials use your username and email account and password, and they're issued through the registration office through Extended Education approximately two to three business days after the registration in your first course. Okay. So enrollment is available through our Extended Education Registration Office Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you have taken a course at CSUDH in the past two years, you may register online using our mycsudh.edu account. We highly recommend that you register early, early, early to make sure that space is available in the course and to allow enough time for course information and online access information to be created and distributed. Payment is due at the time of registration. Now you can pay for courses individually or you can pay for multiple courses all at once. Uh, we do have a little bit of financial assistance in the federal WIOA Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, which provides funding through the California Employment Development Department uh, for qualifying students who currently are unemployed or seeking career training or a career shift. For more information, please email WIOA at csudh.edu 
or visit our program website for more information. If you need any other financial assistance, we recommend Googling private student loan providers or connect with sallymay.com for student loan details. Again, we recommend register at least one week before the course begins. Now, once you've received your login information, you'll be able to easily access the Toro student portal to connect with your class and check your Toro mail and personal emails frequently for special instructions and campus notifications. You'll also want to be sure to test your account access on Blackboard and get comfortable with the layout of the class, such as where to find announcements, meeting schedules, discussions, and the like. Let us know via our academic technology services if you're having any difficulty connecting. Okay. Now we're going to get ready for our Q&A. So I do see that there's a few questions in the Q&A panel, um, but I just want to get a, a little bit of information and I'll ask our instructors to go ahead and unmute yourself so that you're ready to uh, join in on the conversation. Um, one of the general questions that we always get is things along the lines of how do I get hired in meeting and event planning if I don't really have any really juicy experience? Does anybody want to address that particular question? I would say uh, look for internships or to work for another uh, event planner part-time. Um, experience is everything. So if you can, if you, um, if you have the ability to, to start off and, and, um, and work as, on a volunteer basis for events, um, I, I know a lot of meeting planners are always looking for event staff. Um, and if not, look for a, um, a, a part-time uh, job with an event planning company and just get your foot in the door. Anybody else have any uh, insight yeah. into that? Well, yeah, I don't think that it's directly related, but I think, sorry. Oh my it's okay. <laughs> Technical difficulty there, there so go. sorry. Quite all right. <laughs> um, I'm not used to having things plugged into me. What can I say? Um, the uh, joining meetings and things like that too, and joining associations which is a great place. Uh, they are still doing meetings online uh, and you can, really network with a lot of great people and, and actually meet people that you might not have ever met before. So there's a few of those, um, like on Facebook, you can look up FET, F-E-T-E. There's ILEA um, for weddings. There is WIPA, W-I-P-A. Um, MPI, MPI, Yes, there's a lot of um, so, local SoCal um, as well, like Site SoCal, MPI SoCal. Um, I think that's is that it pretty much it everyone probably has different industry uh, associations based on what they do like Michael might have something for AV um, different people might have different things for weddings or global things like that I want to chime in this Charmaine oh go ahead Marla okay I was gonna say uh, we all have experience so look at the experience that you have and by taking this certificate program, you'll be able to see where the experience you have will translate into what we look for in a skill set in the industry. So um, please join us and you will get the experience that you need as you go. Charmin, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I'd like to add um, on what Deshaun mentioned is volunteering. So if you have an affinity towards a local organization, uh, join, join their planning committee, because that's how I got a lot of the experience is joining some affinity organizations that I was interested in. Okay. And along those lines too, um, uh, if you guys can see on the screen, we've shared some links to some of our social media and other resources. And one of the most powerful resources you can really take advantage of, of course, is LinkedIn. And so we actually have a group for our meeting and event planning students and our faculty participate within that group and share resources. We highly recommend that you connect with those instructors and uh, share resources and request information from them as well. And they're happy to help and assist in that group. 
Uh, and then that way you can continue on your communication once the course is done and give us feedback. Let us know how you're doing in the industry. I think it's amazing that Deshaun is a former student who's now uh, teaching and, and working professionally in this industry and actually is a leader in the industry along with these other instructors. So uh, please, by all means, take advantage of the, uh, the LinkedIn group as well. Um, we have another question. This is in the chat. Are the courses centered around corporate only or are we uh, interested in planning local personal private events? Now we, we know we discussed about wedding planning and um, uh, international events and things like that. Um, if you have a section on starting your, your own event planning business, what, what course would be the ideal thing to lead into that? Well, let me go ahead and take that first question. And no, it's not only corporate. Uh, we cover everybody, I think every week, every session, every different subject will cover corporate and personal. So it's not just focused on, on corporate. We talk a lot about what's going on in the private sector. Um, and right now, those seem to be the events that are really starting up more so than the corporate events. So of course we will discuss those no be more because they're, they're on trend right now. Okay. And if uh, someone wants to start up their own business, are there other recommendations of, of um, information to get started? I, I think that the, the skill set that, um, that's given in the certificate is your starting point because you want to, um, you know, these are the basic fundamentals of, of the meeting and event planning industry. So if this is the career that you want, um, I think that um, taking these courses is definitely the, the basis and the fundamentals. And then outside of that, um, uh, basic business knowledge, um, you know, I, I think that uh, for me, uh, utilizing um, my local uh, small business administration um, utilizing um, chambers, and then also, um, you know, utilizing the media and event industry network um, has definitely helped me through my career. Uh, starting my own company is probably the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life, but I will do it again in a heartbeat um, because it's also been the most rewarding. So um, I, I don't think, I think that you're going to have to do it simultaneously because there are definite um, basic skills that you need to have as a business owner, but you also need to have the knowledge of the industry in order to be successful. Absolutely. Okay, we have a question from Marion Fifi Locke. What are the classes that are offered in, in um, the spring term that are different from the fall sessions? Do we have a change up? How does the schedule change? That would be Marla's class, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, the two electives are every other semester. Perfect. And um, you can definitely double check in the information kit that we provided in the chat. There is a link to the current schedule. And then on the website, it'll tell you how the courses alternate as well. Okay. Um, there is a question from Jacqueline Espinosa. Does CSUDH offer an internship or volunteer work within the university? Um, we're, that we're aware of, not anything specifically, but we do have an on-campus career center that coordinates internships with um, students throughout the CSUDH system. And we highly recommend that you get in touch once you're in the program, connect with the career center and um, see how they can help you with that information as well. And then of course, again, in the LinkedIn group um, and connecting with the instructors, they're always going to provide uh, industry resources and, and give you connections within those uh, meeting and event planning industry organizations where internships may be available as well. Uh, uh, Brian Garcia asks, uh, do I need to take any college classes in order to be in the program? Uh, no, this is a professional development certificate program. So there is not any type of uh, on-campus admission. You do not need to go through an admissions process through the campus, you you're simply sign in to uh, your MyCSUDH account if you've been through the campus before or contact our registration um, office, which I'm gonna provide some information just coming up in just a moment. Uh, Nancy Walsh asks, is there a final um, impromptu test? I think that's what she's saying, impromptu test in order to get your certificate. Is there any kind of testing that's required through any of the courses? 
No, not at this time. Okay. So all of the, all of the experience that you're gaining is in the classroom projects. Yeah. Um, does anybody want to provide any more insight regarding their uh, specific projects at all? Um, I think all of our classes have some type of hands-on uh, uh, learning scenario. Um, so again, uh, you're not just listening to talking heads, but you actually get to um, utilize the, the concepts that we're talking about. Um, and you'll walk away, uh, walk away from each of our uh, classes with um, something that you can um, actually use in your event planning. Uh, Excellent. 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 Well, I think that addresses all of the questions that we have in the Q&A. So um, what I want to do is just make sure that everybody is aware of the next steps. So at this point, we've covered a great deal of information regarding the programs, but just in case you missed anything or you have any follow-up questions, feel free to email us or call us during our business hours, which are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And you can email us at learn at csudh.edu or you can call our marketing line at 310-243-2075. And then when you're ready to take those next steps and get registered, our registration office will be standing by to take your uh, registrations and questions via phone at 310-243-3741. And then just press number one when you hear the music. And remember, if you've recently been a student at CSUDH, take advantage of your online access. You can go ahead and register straight through the MyCSUDH portal and get your classes right away. Okay, so at this point, we have wrapped up our program. This concludes the meeting and event planning certificate programs information session. We wanna thank you for joining us today. Again, feel free to connect with us on our website, via our social media, on our Facebook page, our LinkedIn group. And remember to register early to get your spot in your preferred classes. We'd love to get a little bit of feedback on the session today. So please let us know how we can improve the quality of our information that we provided by visiting bit.ly slash CSUDH dash webinar dash feedback. That link is also in the chat. And this survey will give us information um, on how to better improve. And we'll provide that link in our follow-up email at the end of the session. Now we're gonna stay in the meeting room for just a few more minutes to give everyone an opportunity to jot down any last minute notes or to download the uh, MEX information kit from the chat panel. And the recording for this session will be available shortly after the session. We also live streamed on our Facebook today. So that recording is also available. Mm -hmm. um, when you're ready to leave, all you need to do is simply click the red leave button in the corner of your screen once again, we thank you for joining us. We look forward to working with you. Please stay, stay safe, be good, have a great day. Thank you, everyone.